The margins between the best and the worst tanks in World of Tank Blitz aren't as far apart as some people, including myself, always make it out to believe. Nonetheless, there are tanks that are that much worse than all the others. Let's find out what they are, and don't forget to like and subscribe. By its size, you might assume that the MX City C is American. But because of its armor that is about as razor thin as the blade of a guillotine, it is very definitely French. Now the problem with this vehicle really is that it is absolutely massive while having no armor whatsoever. And even though it is quite fast, it has a gun that can be best described as just about average, which isn't really a great thing to have, especially because the average to rate medium tank gun is often inferior to the average to rate heavy tank gun, which doesn't really make any sense whatsoever, but that's how Wargaming has decided to balance the game. Now, it isn't all bad news for the MX CDC. It does have 10 degrees of gun depression, very good accuracy, and 212 millimeters of standard penetration, which is quite good for a vehicle of this type. However, the big problem that still remains with this vehicle is that there are so many other better options that have very similar guns and that don't suffer from being this preposterously large. Now, it is quite fast because of its 1,200 horsepower engine, but then again, why would you play it for that when you can step one tier lower and get yourself a Dracula which is smaller and also quicker? So it doesn't really make any sense to purchase this vehicle, especially because the most important thing about a premium tank is always going to be its value. The value that you're getting right here is uh, not a lot. Now, obviously it has been in the game for many years and is sold for cheap, but despite that, there really isn't much value to be had in the MX CDC. If there was one mascot for the word power creep, then the T44-100 would probably be it. Despite its fiery camouflage, this vehicle is worse than the Tech Tree counterpart T44, making it one of the very few vehicles in this game that is in fact pay to lose. Now, because there isn't really anything else to say about this vehicle, because it's literally just the worst T44, it plays the exact same, which means it doesn't even have any sort of novelty value that you could let's say, play, play something different, have a different play style. No, it plays the exact same as the T44, but you just have to pay for it, which adds no value whatsoever. If it had some different play style, you maybe could think about it, even though it might not be a great vehicle. But here's the big problem with World of Tanks Blitz balancing and how the premium tanks, or soon, or probably all collector tanks, I don't know how that's going to go. Probably it's going to go nowhere, because this is Wargaming we're talking about. But the thing is, is that most of the time, when you have a premium tank, if it's worse than a tech tree vehicle, it's not worth considering ever to buy it. It's just a waste of money completely. If it's the same as a tech tree tank, it can make sense if it's a different playstyle than a tech tree tank, or if it's the same playstyle as a tech tree tank that you really enjoy, and you just want to have a vehicle that plays the same, but also makes credits. But ideally, you always want to have a vehicle that's better than the tech tree counterparts, which sort of is a little bit pay to win, but... Because vehicles like that exist, because there are vehicles in World of Tank Splits that are better than the Tech Tree counterparts, it means that the premium tanks that are as good as the Tech Tree vehicles kind of don't really make a lot of sense to buy unless you already have all of the premium tanks that are better than the Tech Tree counterparts. It's really weird. So if Wargaming releases a new vehicle that's the same performance as the Tech Tree tank, there's no point buying it ever. So, anyway, th that is much there because... The value at that point is uh, not very high. Like, for example, the STRV81 as well, which sort of deserves an honorable mention on this list as well, because it's literally just Centurion 1 that's made Swedish. So vehicles like that, they, they don't really hold any value at all, and they're not really worth buying. And the T44-100 is, I think, the absolute king of power creep and having no point, no value to ever buy, because it's the same as T44, but worse. We all know what the SH of IS-2SH actually stands for. Now, this vehicle is a Soviet heavy tank that doesn't obviously have a lot of accuracy. It has 400 alpha damage and it has a turret at the rear, which is very unusual for this type of vehicle. Now, the problem is vehicles like this are not very versatile whatsoever. They can be really good at just one thing, like, for example, the VK-90, which is the absolute side-scraping god of the game, or... 
they can be like the IS-2SH, and that is essentially all-round useless, because the gun of this vehicle just isn't even up to the task either. It doesn't have a good accuracy. Obviously, it's a Soviet heavy tank gun. It's never going to have good accuracy. It doesn't have good DPM. It has 400 alpha damage, which is fine, but nothing substantial there. And the real big problem arises from the armor of the vehicle. The front plate can be penned relatively easily in a side scraping position because of the angle of the front plate, which means that even the one trick that it should be good at, it's not really that great at. And to be fair, side scraping and roll tank splits isn't that useful of a technique anyway. It's more of a niche thing, so that doesn't help you much. So here we have a vehicle that is one of the worst heavy tanks at tier 8 and it also isn't even sold at a low price because we also have the is5 that can be purchased for 1500 gold and the is5 is a better vehicle than the is2sh and that is why something like this is definitely gonna be on here there is no value it's probably not a lot of fun and there definitely isn't any performance in a vehicle like this Speaking of lacking performance, the HWK-30 is the perfect example for idiots will buy anything as long as it's put in front of them and they have the wallet open. Because this vehicle has been first put into the game in crates and it also does have this special camouflage. Now, why would you want this vehicle in the first place when it is inferior to the in-game RU-251 in the tech tree? I have no idea why you would want to purchase that, which means the value of this vehicle is already zero from the beginning. And on top of that, this is a tier 8 light tank, which makes it very difficult to play. And something like an AMX CDC, very similar problem to that. It is a very specific vehicle that is only going to go do well in the hands of a really good player. And while good players can put themselves out there and claim that a good tank is always good because every tank is good because they can play it good or whatever else there is it is a matter of fact that for the average player a vehicle like the hwk30 is never going to work really well which is quite sad because it can do somewhat okay in the right hands but the problem that comes mainly from this vehicle is that the iu251 is literally free and you have to pay for this tank why the hell would you pay to lose with the HWK-30? How on earth are you gonna get worse than the HWK-30 in terms of value? Well, you can't really, but you can get a lot worse in performance. This is the 59 pattern. My pick for the worst tier 8 premium tank in World of Tanks Blitz, because what you have here you have a Type 59 chassis that someone thought, hmm, let's put a weak spot on that and a worse gun. Because this vehicle is a combination of a Type 59 and a pattern with a 225 alpha damage gun that barely has any penetration. So, essentially, if we, for example, look at again the Centurion 5-1, the vehicle has turret armor, the vehicle has penetration, the vehicle has better mobility on top of that. So this vehicle in its entirety is utterly pointless. Now, it can be bought as a challenge to torture yourself to get to the maximum out of it. But in general, this is one of the worst built tanks that World of Tanks Blitz has to offer. And I can absolutely recommend against ever considering this vehicle to purchase. Now, there are other terrible vehicles as well, like the TS-5. And if you are a TS-5 enjoyer, I can already hear you angrily typing. But those vehicles, they have some usefulness to certain types of players, but the 59 pattern really doesn't do that at all. It doesn't have any usefulness to anybody besides basically just making you miserable. So with that said, this is my worst tank. What is yours? Put it down in the comments, and thank you very much for watching.